So in our last tutorial, we showed how to create the walls using a tiled sprite. And now we want to put a ball or something inside that's going to bounce around inside. And so I'm going to start by adding a new object. And I'm just going to find something that looks like a ball. It doesn't have to be a ball. So for instance, this round joystick will work. And I'm going to add it to the game. And then once it's added to the game, just a reminder, you should always be saving your project frequently. So if you haven't already saved it into a folder someplace, make sure you do that. And uh, I'm going to uh, edit this object now. Uh, I'm going to rename it, let's call it ball. And I'll apply that and I'll drag it into the scene. Now that is way too big. But I can resize it either by using the handles or by going over and choosing custom size and typing numbers. Okay, and I'm making it 32 by 32 because that's the size of my grid. So now that I have the, the ball on the scene, I'm gonna put it somewhere near the middle. And we have two goals here. One is to make it move, and the other is to make it so it bounces off the walls. So let's start by making it move. Now, both of these require us to use the event system, or at least that is the way I'm going to do it. So let's go to level events. And if you accidentally close this, you can always get it back open by going. So if I accidentally close that tab, go back and click on your level and it will reopen the level tabs for you. Now, notice when I go to this tab for events, there's nothing here. So we're going to start by adding a new event. And we need to decide when we want it to start moving. And I'm going to start it moving at the beginning of the scene, so when the level starts. So I'm going to add a condition. It's not based on the object itself. It's based on when the scene starts. So I'll go to Other Conditions. And I'll find Scene, the Scene category. And at the beginning of the scene. So when the scene first starts, and I'll hit OK. And then I need to decide what's going to happen. So I have the condition here. And you can add multiple conditions if you wish, but I only need it when the scene starts. But I'm going to add the action now. So the action that's going to occur is that the ball is going to have a force applied to it to make it start moving. So I'm going to add a force. Notice under the movement category here, add a force. And if you knew the code to do this, you could just type it in. But most of you probably won't know that yet. So go use the formula. And I'm going to create a random direction. So I'm going to go to random. And I'll choose a random integer between 0 and 359 for degrees. So that's like any direction, basically. And maybe a hundred, oops, a hundred uh, pixels per second at the beginning. And then here's something that's a little bit confusing, but uh, we want it to actually be pushing on it for the whole event. So I'm going to say permanent, even though it sounds like it's always going to be doing this, but it's going to do it while the event is occurring. Okay. So notice it says, typically used in an event with conditions that are only true once. So I'm going to say OK. And let's play it and make sure it actually moves. So if we play our game, let's see what happens. Yeah, it moves. OK. Now notice it went right through the wall because we haven't told it to bounce yet. And the way that we do that is by looking for a different event. So think about what happens when you want the ball to bounce. Well, it's going to bounce when it hits something. So let's add another event. So not, not in this one, but add a new event, completely different event. And the condition will be when the ball collides with something. So here's collision and collision. And it's going to collide with our walls, which these were our walls. And um, we really only care for it to bounce when it actually hits the edges. So we'll, we'll leave it uh, the way it is there. So I'll say OK. And then we'll go add an action. So I'm going to add an action. 
and I want the ball to bounce. But if you go and look, there is no bounce option over here. And that's because bouncing is a specific kind of behavior. It's not a simple thing. So I'm going to go back to my level, grab the ball, and I'm going to add a behavior for bouncing. And I may have to go and search for behaviors because it's probably not installed by default. So look for bounce. And notice I've already installed it, but I'll go ahead and reinstall it just so it's showing you what to do. And there's my bounce behavior now. And so I'll click on that and I'll add that behavior. Oh, notice it's already added. Okay, so I don't need to do that again. So now if I go back to my events, when the ball collides with the block, I want it to bounce. So I'll go add the action for that now. There's the ball. And now notice, since I added that behavior, now I have the option to bounce off of another object. And I just need to say what I allow it to bounce off of. So I'll go ahead and bounce off of my tiled brown block because that's my walls. And I'll say OK. And let's just review what we've done here. We added something at the beginning of the scene that makes it start moving. And then every time it collides with the walls, we're going to make it bounce off the wall. So let's go and preview this and make sure it's actually running as intended. Okay, there we go. So, and it should just keep bouncing indefinitely. And this is kind of the starting point for uh, a game that we're going to be creating.